Welcome to Chateau de la Ferte. So we'll give you a full tour because it's been a while and we do have a, a lot of new subscribers, thank you. And I really hope you all enjoy the journey that we're going through. The Chateau, the castle was built 1854. And what we'll do is we'll try and go through the Chateau and actually the outbuildings, just to give you a bit of a brief layout of how it is. Come on in. And I do, I really do hope you enjoy the tour. Coming in from the front door, to the right, down the end, is the stairs to go up the stairs, obviously. The kitchen. We then have the doors into the salon, which we'll come back to. These are the dining room doors on my right. You have the workman's toilet. Nothing special. That's Adrian's toilet to the left. And then you have Adrian's den here to the right. Now this is the kitchen or what is meant to be the kitchen. As you can see, it's far from that. We have to do the ceiling. It's all been insulated, it needs boarding up. And, and there's a mass amount of doors in here. So behind this curtain is the door into the dining room. You have the fireplace there. You have the doors, which were the old servants' doors to the kitchen. Door for the utility room and then obviously the doorway to the hallway. So there's not much space in here for units when it comes to planning the kitchen. And through the utility room door is where Adrian knocked down the wall to make more space. Obviously this door will be cut in half this board will slide back, making the entrance for the cellar. So there's a really nice sized utility room once it's all done. So we'll go back down the corridor to the salon. Into the salon that needs no explanation. I'm sure you've seen it plenty of times now. This room has taken far longer than we ever expected, starting last March 22. But we're on the home stretch now. As you can see, there's a big chunk of the floor done. And this is the original parquet flooring that was stacked up very badly, rotting away in the hallway when we moved in. The previous owner had removed it and left no plan, which is why it's been causing so much of a headache. Not too much to finish now, although it could take a few more weeks because there's an awful lot missing. To see more of this room and its progress, you can see the time lapse that we've done previously. So standing in the centre of the room, there are the doors to the hallway. These are the doors also to the hallway, but they're fake, so they don't actually open. And then you have two sets of doorways onto the terrace. And then the ones into the dining room. into the dining room this has been ongoing for about three months now that's not including the floor so Adrian had to replace the whole of this floor here um, it was rotten had woodworm so all the beams and joists had to be replaced all the insulation has been put in 
and then it's all been what's that wood called? OSB. OSB board. Um, we then had the massive job of working out this parquet flooring, which was all stacked up in the hallway. Um, you can see where the stickers were. That's all very well give us all the stickers on the floor, but there was no plan to go with that. So that's, that took us about a month, didn't it? <laughs> <laughs> well, it certainly felt like a month, didn't it? <laughs> yeah, it did. Um, ceiling had to have four coats on it. We then had the task of all the mouldings. Well, I had the task of all the mouldings. Um, most of them are broken off. Um, I've patched majority of them up now. As you can see over here, had to match the paint up with the woodwork. But that's come up quite nicely there. I'm still working on the bit around the fireplace. It's probably looking a bit glossy at the moment because I just had a glaze on it. Still working on the colour up there. The fabulous William Morris wallpaper that absolutely everybody loves apart from my daughters. The pattern had to go in the middle, so that was a bit of a chore, getting everything centred. We then added this trim around the edge. There was a recess there, but it sat in nice and perfectly. So that was glued around the edges. And to top it off, we have the chandelier. The icing on the, the cake. The icing on the cake, which is the chandelier. Which works well in the end, doesn't it? So that concludes the tour of the dining room. So this was the first floor that Adrian's done. When we moved in, there was a wall here with a separate smaller room. So there was two rooms here. This wall had to come down because it wasn't safe and it was falling through the floor. So that was the first thing that had to go. Adrian then killed himself getting the new flooring down and I'll let him explain. Uh, well, what would you do? So we decided to make this our permanent kitchen for a good year, didn't we? So before I can actually get into the proper original kitchen. So the first thing we did actually was get ourselves a kitchen unit. Uh, we came across a couple in Laval, I believe it was, who kindly uh, donated uh, their kitchen to us if we took it out, which was a good deal as far as I could see. So uh, we didn't really have to do anything with it really, dismantle it. We had, did have to take it down three flights of stairs, bring it over here obviously in the van, uh, but it's worked really well. Oh, and yeah. actually Bethany was here at the time that we had to fit the kitchen, so if it's a bit crooked, you know, Oi. it's really nice. <laughs> <laughs> but as you can see, um, Bethany's shower room is above, so all the pipe work had to be put in for that from the other end of the chateau, which was quite a challenge. The ceiling was coming down anyway. The coving, which weighed a ton, wasn't safe. It's full of brick. So uh, in here, uh, the jobs that we need to do in here for we convert it, we need to drop the ceiling slightly in here to cover up all of that. So we'll put a, a suspended ceiling in here. Um, again, we'll put some more insulation in there sort out the walls which need to be uh, lime and plaster so that they breathe because these external walls are uh, here and then we can uh, uh, move down to the original kitchen and start sorting that out before I can move stuff down there. It's a long, long if way away. If you look over here, there used to be a fireplace, I'm sure if you can see behind there, but because they've removed the two chimneys at either end of the chateau, well, that's not usable anymore, so we will cover that up and this will be the TV and snug room anyway, so TV might sit quite nicely there. So on to the next room, are you touring the whole chateau, are we? I'll leave it to you. We have the main floor for our bedrooms. There are four bedrooms on this floor. First we come to Bethany's room. This was done quickly so that she could feel at home when she came back from university. So all we did was transport everything from her original room 
to here to make her feel cozy and at home. Many of you have probably seen this before, as many of the other rooms. We haven't done anything different in here yet. And we have a, a guest coming next weekend, so water bottles out to try and keep them warm. And then this was the walk-in wardrobe that we turned into an ensuite for her. Again, I apologise if we've already said it, but we're not doing these windows yet, any of the windows. Until the spring, or even later than that. And going through to her shower, which she absolutely loves. Everybody loves this shower. Keeping it nice and modern for her. Again, no special furniture. That comes later unexpectedly. You can see where the wallpaper's cracking open here. The reason being that on the other side of this wall is the servant's door. We're going to keep those original features, just tart them up a little bit. Back into the main corridor, we have three further bedrooms and the bathroom eventually. We'll get round to doing these, but we've made them comfortable for now. We have this arrangement of wardrobes and cupboards, absolutely fantastic. But I do need to find a library ladder so that I can slide it along and get to them. All the original flooring is still in place. And the first bedroom you come to is the master bedroom that we're using. Oh look, Tia's in here. There's a surprise. I have temporarily put this rug in here just to keep some warmth in. And it is still just our original furniture. But the bed sits nicely in that alcove. Eventually we'll put some drapes up behind, bring the bed forward a little bit. These chairs I originally bought in England. But now they're not going in the salon because a different colour scheme. We have three pairs of curtains there sewn together just to give us some privacy and there is the fireplace with the fire insert that I took by bought at Abracont last year and you can see here this piece of marble is actually broken so I might actually make that one of my next jobs. It is just balanced there to show you Yes, we do have a television in the bedroom. We have to have something to do at the end of a long day. It's a lovely sized bedroom. And then through this door to the left of the bed, we have the ensuite. We have the macerating toilet, the fittings that we got from the Bracant. And then going through to I'll put the light on for you for the shower. All gold fittings in keeping with the royal suite that I based it on, on a, in a hotel in Chantilly. And then on the other side of the bedroom, on the other side of the bed, we have the vanity room that I showed you not too long ago. With the view of the garden, this is the centre of the house with the arched windows. The field that you can see beyond the woods, or the petty woods, is our five acre field. And then on the other side of the road, we have two smaller fields, just under an acre each. But we won't be doing anything with those. This mirror is or was originally left here by the owner, something he didn't actually take. And you can see up in the corner, 
these are remains of where the servants' bells went and they are up inside the bed canopy and up there as well and lo and behold there's some gold leaf that I put up there oh good year and a half ago along with the power mat and the hold bags going along the corridor we then come to the next bedroom which is our eldest daughter's bedroom for her, her husband and grandson, Zach. So we haven't done too much in this bedroom yet because of the lintel that needs replacing above this door. So Zach has his bed in the alcove, a built-in cupboard there. There's no shortage of cupboards in this place. But nothing spectacular about this room at the moment. I do have plans. I have got already got the wallpaper and some furnishings for this room. But until this lintel here is replaced, we can't do any more. This is an adjoining bedroom, which eventually will be Zach's bedroom but for the moment we're using it as a lounge area. This one actually has the deepest alcove and behind that wardrobe there is another servant's door. So we have three doors in this room. The one to the other bedroom, one to the corridor and one through to the bathroom. Again, another one of the mirrors that was left behind ties in nicely with the pink peachy coloured fire surround which is marble. This table will be going into the salon after Adrian's cleaned it. I bought that at a Brocant the first few months we came here. So if we go through this door, yes my geraniums are in here at the moment, you can see that is the servant's door there that goes into the alcove for the bed and then through ah there's a problem there's no door handle bear with me in fact we'll just go back round and the other way <laughs> that wasn't very well planned was it and round to where that door would have led us is the main bathroom again we've made this livable it was awful when we moved in the floor came up beautifully and Adrian didn't have to spend months doing that. I'm going to take Bethany shopping to get some plants in here and a few accessories. I'm not a big lover of a shower over the bath but it was quite difficult to plan this bathroom. Coming out of this bathroom, there is another toilet here, which is what we had to move, what well, we had to use when we first moved in. It was the only working toilet. And now it doesn't get used at all because we put one actually in the bathroom, which to us English makes more sense. So that's looking down the other end of the corridor. Out this window we have a view of the church and the village. A couple of walls that we need to get repaired for the council. The lavoir and the top field. Welcome to the top floor. Uh, Cal and I haven't done anything up here restoration wise. Uh, the only thing I've done, which we've shown now even, is I've put underlaying carpet down and that purely just to keep some warmth in the floor below. And I forgot, I actually did put insulation up in the, uh, well, the attic, the loft, if you like, uh, the four towers and the bit in the middle. 
But all the roofs, lava and plaster, as you see, but they are coming away. So a job that needs doing will be uh, replacing those with plasterboard. So there's six bedrooms up here. That's my spare one. When Carol and I have our disagreement. And like downstairs, there's always a bedroom on the end by the stairway, and then there's a doorway that takes you in, and we have another five bedrooms. A lot of cupboard space again down the sides with the dormers. And again, this used to be my office, but not anymore. Now, this the bedroom I've just come out of is above our main bedroom. And then this room, a bit of a mess moment, that's why I found that spare floor, uh, is the room which is the center of the chateau. Hence the curved windows up there as below in uh, Carol's uh, vanity room. And um, this is directly above our ensuite shower. Smallest, it's quite a small room. Be quite nice actually to do that one. <clears throat> then we have what we're sort of going to do as a family room. So we've got three bedrooms linked together. Reasonable size again. Relux window, double glazed. Most of the windows up here, if not all of them actually, are double glazed. That which is a, a great thing. But they don't have shutters, so it's easier to pop in a, a framework with double glazing. Get another room for storage. Basically, it's like a loft for us up here. And then you can see it. So all these three rooms are really much connected. And uh, the idea is probably to do it as a family salon, if not, yeah, living space, and then a bathroom and a bedroom. This one's not as bad, but you can see, if I try and show you, the lava is starting to drop away, well, the plaster's starting to drop away from the lava, and uh, that will drop, which we're finding up here slowly over time. Doorway back to the corridor, the hallway. No heating up here at all. I have no radiators. The plan will probably be just to uh, put electric heating up here. I can't see a need. It's not a, a floor that's going to be used much. I can't see a need to start plumbing pipe and radiators all up here. So I think we'll just rely on electric ones. Might even put a, a stove in a couple of fireplaces uh, in the middle rooms. Oh, and the original. Yeah, I think we call it a pissoir. <laughs> not connected. Right, there is the top floor. Well, I did forget to mention is the ceiling rows. It's directly above the uh, stairway and the, uh, the architrave. And don't look now if you're scared of heights. Well, that is, well, if I can work it out, for probably a good 15 foot drop, 15 meter drop, I mean. 